to you in my Dr. Professor Gedinowski and Jacqueline Hopner. Peter is running the HDR Supervision Development Team, his Master at University has, and Professor of Forestry in the Penn School of Environment Society. And as everyone has kindly obliged to following my promptings with the other side, we should actually finish this presentation with 10 minutes to spare. So if the other speakers are still around and you can have questions, we can continue. Or we can take a 10 minute first start on Thank you, Peter. Thanks very much, Jenny, and hello, everybody. Um, nice to be here with you. We're switching um, topic focus a little bit uh, away from anxious students. I'm uh, very interested to hear from Janelle and Michelle about that topic uh, to um, anxious PhD students and anxious supervisors. Um, and our role. Um, Jackie and I are working together with Imelda Wheelan, the Dean of High Degree Research, and her team to implement, uh, develop and implement a HDR supervision support program at ANU. Um, it's a new initiative, um, although there have been a few precursors over the years for those of us who, like Jenny and me, have been around the ANU for a while. You can probably remember when this happened uh, in a different incarnation last time. But um, as you'll see, we're, we uh, are relying on online learning for some of what we're doing. And I think um, it's fair to say that we feel a bit unprepared uh, for knowing how best to approach this. So we were very pleased to um, have an invitation from uh, Katie and Rebecca, who we're working with um, in some of the work we're doing, to come and talk to you about this uh, today. So uh, I'll talk a bit about the context of what we're doing and the HDR supervision framework, and then pass to Jackie to talk a bit about uh, the substance um, and invite your feedback. Um, part of the context of the implementation of the supervision framework is what's happening uh, nationally and internationally, where there's uh, recognition, as there has been in teaching and learning more generally, uh, for longer, I think, that uh, HDR supervision skills uh, are a bit like those that we were just seeing a video about, um, in part based around a set of principles, and although they need to be adapted uh, by individuals, uh, good practice is built around a, at least some sense of a common set of principles, and also built around um, uh, a range of um, personal behaviours, um, for example, uh, in the Australian case at the moment, um, we're very conscious because of the Human Rights Commission report uh, of the principles of respectful relationships. Uh, universities strongly focused on ensuring that all of the uh, interactions between staff and students, including those between HDR supervisors and students, are respectful. And so a second um, uh, context that we're working in is the, the policy environment at ANU and uh, the work that Imelda's leading on redefining the ANU PhD. So um, improving supervisory practice, helping supervisors develop their supervisory practice is part of this broader package of uh, redefining the, the ANU PhD and how we support it. Uh, we have um, a supervision development framework that's been adopted by the university but um, uh, not yet really widely publicised. That's in part because we're trying to make sure we've got the elements in place before we roll it out. Um, you can see why when you look at my diagram here we need the help of ANU online to represent things more effectively. Um, but this is my uh, crude PowerPoint version of that uh, framework. Um, as I mentioned, we have some online learning and support resources uh, that um, communicate good practice, principles, and, practi and, and, and their interpretation. Uh, and um, uh, Jackie will talk specifically about those, and that's what we are focusing our um, content on today. Uh, we also have um, a series of face-to-face -face, uh, development activities. Um, we're fortunate in the university to have a group of people, uh, many people, who are supervision practices outstanding. Solomon, who spoke earlier, was recognised earlier in the year with the Vice Chancellor's Award for Excellence, Excellence in Supervision, as well as his classroom teaching. So we're drawing on people like him uh, to learn about the way they uh, develop their supervisory practice. 
we're developing a what we're thinking of as a supervision portal and community of practice, and we're particularly interested to um, pick your brains about how we do that effectively. And then finally, the university will be implementing a supervision uh, supervisor registration system. <coughs> All of us who supervise PhD students will uh, have to uh, register, uh, be registered on that system, and to be registered on that system, we'll have to pass some minimum threshold, pass and maintain some minimum threshold of engagement with HDR supervision practice. So I'll pass to Jackie to talk about what some of the elements of that might be. Jackie, thanks. So uh, as Peter mentioned, we've got some kind of core online resources that we're working with. So we've got the FEGM uh, package, which is uh, supervising doctoral studies. So uh, this is kind of what it looks like. It's at the moment, it looks like a Wardle page. Um, got a nice uh, kind of introduction by Imelda, uh, but then there's these sort of, like with any other FEGM software, you've kind of got um, this score package so you can go through, you can reflect on your experience. There's you know, a series of videos and scenarios and things like this. So it's trying to make it um, a more interactive and, and a more um, engaging, uh, format, so rather than just reading a handbook on how to be a good supervisor, um, it kind of forces you to think about your own supervision practice, uh, what your experience was as an HDR student yourself, whether that has influenced uh, how you relate to your um, how you relate to your students now, and so um, yeah, you can kind of there's quizzes and there's there's um, things that really kind of force you to think more critically about supervision than uh, what we typically think of now. Um, one of the quotes in the green paper, the redefining the PhD, um, a new PhD was, do we learn supervision by osmosis? <laughs> and so it's really trying to challenge that idea. Um, is there actually a pedagogy? Can we apply things that we learn in other teaching uh, frameworks to supervision rather than just, well, this is how I learned, um, so therefore I'm going to do this. Um, so there's nine modules, so they start out from the sort of setting expectations, you know, you've got your first P uh, PhD student, so how do you have those early conversations about, okay, well, this is, this is my responsibility to you, this is what I expect from you. Um, you know, interviewing prospective PhD students, those sort of early steps, all the way through to getting them through the examination, and then um, evaluating your own practice, and sort of thinking about, well, what went wrong, what went right, what do I do next time that I have a PhD student? So, um, and they also have very specific things about, um, you know, dealing with difficult conversations, which, um, as Peter mentioned in our workshop, our face-to-face -face workshops, we have been covering those sorts of things as well. So, um, trying to focus on uh, the things that supervisors most want advice on or resources on. Um, they're flexible. We don't expect anyone to do. Uh, all nine modules in one sitting or anything. Uh, so if you are trying to prepare a student for, uh, for um, examination, you can go just to that module, have a look, see uh, what's what's available, what the advice is, um, and then and then move on. You don't have to uh, go through. So it's um, you you have the ability to sort of dip in and out as you need it. Obviously, if anyone wants to do all nine modules, they can. <laughs> there are a lot there, uh, but that's not the expectation. Uh, as I said, there's videos, scenarios, uh, links to ANU specific policies and guidelines. So um, if you're not sure what um, ANU has to say about, you know, the maximum length of a PhD or, uh, you know, who is allowed to be an examiner and who isn't allowed to be an examiner, there are the resources to the ANU specific policies there, uh, as well as kind of benchmarking and best practice from around the world. So uh, we've, we've kind of drawn on um, people that are doing better than, than we might be <laughs> in some areas. Uh, the next one is a Pulse module, which is still kind of in development, but the idea will be that once, uh, once you register to be a supervisor, you will have to do um, this Pulse module. So it'll be like other training um, software that you've had to do. Uh, around the code of conduct and things like this when you become um, an employee at ANU, but it will be specific to supervision. So 
uh, probably what we will cover, uh, but we're obviously open to feedback, uh, are things like uh, the global, national and ANU context for uh, HDR research, so what are the policies, what are the expectations, um, the guidelines and codes of conduct, so obviously we expect if you're going to be a supervisor at ANU, you will have to meet certain standards, there are policies that you will have to follow. Um, HDR governance and support structures, so the fact that Imelda is the Dean of HDR, uh, who your convener is, you should know uh, who these people are in your specific schools and, and colleges that you can go to, uh, you're not on your own. Uh, as Peter alluded to, uh, respectful relationships, so we're, we're trying to um, align with the ANU's um, uh, messages around respectful relationships and obviously meet those standards, uh, making sure that supervisors know how to uh, engage with their students in a respectful way. Um, obviously ethics, so we'll be applying uh, things around research integrity into that, and then best practice resources. So, uh, But yes, as I said, feedback, welcome on, on any of that, whether uh, they sound like the most worthwhile things to include in, in and Pulse module for supervision registration. Uh, and then we really want to set up um, a kind of supervision portal a community of practice. So, thank you. Um, we envision this as being a kind of one-stop shop for everything. So there is, of course, the model, um, the FPGM <coughs> software that I just showed you, but this should be, um, the place that you go when you need that just that right that right policy or that right um, best practice guideline. It shouldn't be something you have to sift through. It should be very um, easy to navigate. Um, hopefully, grouped around common themes. So we're going to try and do as much research research as we can to identify what are those common themes. What are the things that people will be specifically looking for, um, and then. Yeah, really easy to navigate, able to kind of dip in and out, but we really want it also to be um, a forum for ongoing conversation. So one of the great things about having the face-to-face -face workshops has been uh, actually hearing stories from current supervisors, the things they found challenging, the things that they learned along the way, the kind of golden rules of supervision. And so we really want there to be a place for those conversations to be ongoing. So it's not just a two-hour workshop, you know, once a month. If you find a really good resource or you had, you know, a really life-changing <laughs> supervision uh, learning experience, uh, something came up that you really want to share, there's a place for you to do that. Uh, we really want to think about the best ways to use uh, this discussion forum and to enable those sorts of ongoing conversations. So does that mean uh, maybe posting um, a weekly discussion question or something like this to kind of prompt conversation, uh, do we think that would work? I would love some advice from you. <laughs> um, but then we've also got the option to, to roll in um, the coffee courses that are already um, an ANU online and, and show uh, activity. So is there a way that we can kind of not reinvent the wheel and actually use something that already exists to kind of facilitate those conversations? Um, to develop these resources, <laughs> Uh, as Peter said, we're working with a ANU Online. We're tra drawing on the wisdom of Chout. Obviously, they've been able to do to teaching what we would love to be able to do to supervision at ANU, making it something where people really understand there is a pedagogy, there is best practice, there are standards that we should be meeting. Uh, we're working with research training, so Imelda and Victoria, um, uh, Inga and Victoria, um, and obviously Imelda and her very fast-growing office of the Dean of HDR, other subject experts, and then HDR leaders. So HDR conveners, we've been meeting with PASA and uh, VC awardees uh, that we're having our workshops on, but we're also trying to draw on their wisdom as well. One more slide, I think. Yes. Uh, help. Yeah, so this last slide says help. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so we're, as we said, we're kind of in the early stages of this. Um, Neither of us are experts in technology-enabled learning, uh, but we are hoping to draw on the combined wisdom, hopefully in the room. We really want, these are the kind of three main questions. 
how do we develop the community practice site so that it's most useful? The worst thing we can do is put a lot of time and effort into this um, and then no one's using it. And it, it, just, it just kind of sits there. Um, maybe someone gets a, downloads a guideline, you know, once, once every six months or something, but it sort of just sits there as, um, as fairly static. Uh, what can we do to maximise the value of the Pulse module so it's not just a box ticking exercise so people actually recognise the importance of doing this and registering as a supervisor and taking that role seriously? Uh, and then what strategies are likely to be effective in promoting the FGM package so that supervisors get the most out of it? Okay. Thanks, Jack. That's it from us. We'd be very grateful for any feedback uh, in the conversation now over lunch or by email to either of us. Um, this is work that we'll be, we'll be developing over the next four or five months. Um, so the timing of this was quite good from our point of view in saying we don't quite know what we're doing and we think you know more about it, so we'd like your advice, please. We're getting plenty from Katie um, and Rebecca and uh, from Chelt, um, but uh, we also recognise lots of other expertise here. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you very much. Sounds like the videos need to be good quality. That's my <laughs> message from. Yeah, and I was thinking along those lines, and I must preface that I don't have a PhD, not have a PhD supervisor, um, but maybe there are sort of six standard traps that people fall into. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you can have a question of when your student isn't doing this or when you're doing that and have a little mm -hmm. three or four minute video about it, and then all the details, then you go to this piece. This um, yeah. document to find out the, the actual details rather than trying to scroll through 20 different types. Yes, yeah, and that's as you, as you pointed out. Yeah, we really want it to be as, as sort of modular and easy to navigate. Um, when we talked to Amy online, um, there was a consensus we don't want it to look like every other model side where you have yeah. to kind of scroll to yeah. the bottom and things like that. So it should just be um, you see the as you say, the, the sort of phrase or the the, mm -hmm. the idea that, that you um, that's exactly what you're looking for. And yeah. You should just be able to find. And I imagine there are standards like there are things that, that you all say, oh, you know, so yes. and so doing this. Yes. Or not. Mm -hmm. Or not. Yes. Yeah. And something I took from uh, each of the previous three presentations, um, which I found very interesting in a more general sense as a as a fellow um, teacher as well. Um, was a, a sort of trick of getting student engagement uh, in ways that are beyond the superficial, I suppose. And Simon, I guess you were particularly talking about that in relation to the use of the sort of those various mechanisms, but uh, in the terms of your, your experience with medical students, I think um, sort of understanding how students learn around these particular sets of activities. So I think I think you're right to identify that perhaps there's something we could flip that around and think about uh, how supervisors engage perhaps with, with the challenges that they face. Of course there's a much greater diversity of supervision experience. It's one of our challenges we think is that um, the ANU includes people who are supervising their first ever PhD student and those who've been supervising since you know, for the last 40 years, mm -hmm. and we, we need at least we'd like to be able to speak to people across that spectrum. So just trying to figure out mm -hmm. how to do that. Um, is, is there a collaborative space for supervisors to get together informally? Because a lot of the students express that they really mm -hmm. just enjoy it. even having a whinge about some of the mm -hmm. things together and going, "Oh, how did you solve this? Mm -hmm. Oh no, we solved that two years ago." Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, mm -hmm. I think some of that cross pollination, brain mm -hmm. trusting, might be useful in. Yeah. The supervisors themselves, like yeah. you know, in an informal setting, not as you know. Were you thinking general. about? I think that's a really important point. Were you thinking about that in the context of an online space or a I was, I, I was physical, physical space? But physical space, you mm -hmm. know, a, a cup of coffee, a pint, you know, the, the traditional way of connecting yeah. with people. You sometimes get more from that than you do from everyone trying to type things and, and get yes. things out. Just a bit. Yes. A lot of offices are now, you know working in one combined space with multiple companies because they could go, oh, we're having a problem with this, and they would say, oh, well, we saw mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. ages ago because mm -hmm. this presented to us in a different way. It's sort of, aside from that, just chatting things, you can really solve a lot of issues, actually human face-to-face, mm -hmm. -face, yeah, that yeah. you can find 
had that very issue. Mm. The workshops have been, um, I think, quite cathartic for, <laughs> for quite a few of the attendees. Um, you know, we, we have tried to um, make sure that they're as, they're as open and, and honest yeah. as possible and that they feel like they can talk about, you know, the good and the bad and the ugly. Um, and, and likewise, we're learning a lot of things because ANU has been so sort of siloed. Um, every school does supervision a bit differently. And we're learning uh, just at the last one, it's a really great practice um, in astronomy that, that um, just in, in informal conversations, people are saying, we, we should do something like that here. So, so a place to really share across Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have the capacity though, and again, I guess there's a bit of analogy there between what you're doing, what computers are doing, mm -hmm. you know, face to face, and mm -hmm. then the online resources um, that we we the, the um, process is, is envisaged as something that has a space for face to face components and a space for online elements, and so we're trying to think through how we get the complementarity. Uh, out of those. I mean, I think you're absolutely right about your point. Some supervisors suggested that a padded, you know, soundproof room is the best, <laughs> is the best uh, place. But yeah, so, so thanks for that idea. Hi. Hi, uh, Zoe Tool from Pasa. Hi. So I'm very, very, I've been watching this from outside the office from inside, and uh, we're all really excited to see how this is going to go. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much for that. Um, a couple of quick points there. I think Imelda also recognises the value of that sort of space, both for uh, students and for supervisors, and in her grand plan of Canberra Mark II, something like that. I think she's got some space earmarked in her mind for that. In the meantime, though, I think um, there are some options that we can work on together for that. Um, and um, uh, just uh, one of the last. Uh, we're having a meeting with uh, next round meeting with PASA, I think next week, to sort of try and make those ideas forward. So we're very pleased to continue that conversation. Thanks. Uh, you hi. mentioned, um, hi, my name's Imogen, I work in the library. Um, you mentioned capturing the expertise as you're going through um, to inform how you do this process. Have you got some things in place to capture that expertise? I don't know, in video format for, mm. you know, experienced mentors or supervisors? So uh, what I would love to do is um, just looking at the, so the FEGM, they do have that, and so the, there's interviews with supervisors who have been, you know, brilliant and, and doing it for 30 years and things like that. But if we could find, if we could get ANU, you know, VC awardees and things like mm -hmm. that and make it more um, relevant to the, the ANU context, I think that would be uh, really great, drawing on those pearls of wisdom. Yes, um, I mean, uh, just to connect a couple of those points, um, at the moment we're just doing that face to face, and so obvious questions <laughs> the one you posed, how do we capture some of that um, from people like Simon, who are, because uh, they're not just people with 30 years experience, so mm. Simon's older than he looks, I think. <laughs> um, but but there, there's a range of really interesting and good supervisory practice individually around campus, and just as CHELP does, recognises there's a range of very good teaching practice around campus and looks to you know share and capitalise on that. As, as Jackie said, we wanted to do that uh, for HDR supervision. Um, uh, so I mean that that's one strand of, of what of what we we need to do. Um, and I'm showing my age because I've lost the connection to the second strand. It was very clear in my mind when I began that conversation. Um, uh, I, th I think um, uh, just um, seeing some of the way that others are using these technologies is really what we need at the moment to help us think about yeah. how we can capitalise on that. The epigeum, as Jackie mentioned, the Epigeum um, package has got that content, but it's mostly British people talking about their experience. It's not irrelevant, but doesn't necessarily speak speak to us. Yeah. Hi. 
the Academy of Science has done something like that. They, they've done a, mm -hmm. a collection of, yeah. of interviews with, uh, with leaders in science. Um, I've looked through a lot of them. Mm -hmm. A lot of those interviews are, are an hour and a half and two hours long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, so one of the yeah. things I would recommend to you is that yeah. you have a very good editor who yes. goes yes. through. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's another connection to some work Jackie did uh, before she took on this role was that she'd worked with the Academy on developing its... Um, um, the strange version of on being a scientist. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that led to some interesting outcomes. But how long are your videos, the ones you're talking about? They have to be, oh sorry, they have to be less than 12 minutes. So the exam is 12 minutes. So they have to be, so the students, a couple of them are actually over 12 minutes and every student a lot of feedback. The examiner has done this in 14 minutes, but the exam is 12 minutes. You know, it needs to be more realistic. It's so right. very short. But of course, the, the problem with that one is that the, the examiner is trying to explain to the students every single thing they do. You know, yeah. Yeah. if it were down to the examiner doing it, it would be down in five minutes. But uh, yeah, but yeah. certainly yeah. less than 12 minutes, and some of them are only yeah. Super, supervisors, <laughs> sort of concentration span is probably less, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say three minutes. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's any reason to reinvent the wheel in the sense that the, the epigenium ones, um, they'll have a, a common question. Mm -hmm. So um, what was the most challenging thing for you when you started out as a silk brother or mm -hmm. something? And they will all, yeah, it'll be just 40 seconds or something yes. for each. Yeah. So I think something like that yes. is fine. Can, can I just ask one flag, one wave, one last, one last flag? I'm sorry, and I remembered the other connection I wanted to make a few points back. Um, uh, the, the other issue, the, 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 we have to have a pulse module as the entry point for supervisor registration. There's no other way the university's HR system can cope mm -hmm. with registration. Uh, and we're desperate to make that something that is, helps people, helps catalyse uh, everybody, all academics going to have to do that. They want to supervise students, so we, we really want to make, want, want to make it work as a catalyst to draw people's interest into the other resources. So any tricks that people got up their sleeves about that, perhaps a few polls from, from Salman's presentation, but any any tricks you've got up your sleeve, we'd be really interested to, to hear that. Um, the other point I wanted to make, a few, a few responses back. Um, this Wednesday uh, morning, so two days from now, we've got the last of our, or the second of our um, supervision uh, panels. Salman's one of the presenters, Jackie's another and Emily Banks from the School of Population Health. Um, so that's on Wednesday morning, everybody's welcome. Um, the details, if you Google Office of the Dean HDR panel, it'll pop up. So if, if it's not too short a notice, please come along then. Jackie, thank, uh, Jackie, thank you very much. And Jackie, thank you very much.